All right, so welcome, welcome. We're going to talk, uh, first of all, kind of reviewing the female athletic health certification application that kind of went out yesterday, which is super exciting, but also what we're gonna be talking about, kind of an overview of the modules and then diving into why. I, I personally believe, and you guys might have your own opinions, why I believe athletic trainers should become more well-versed in female athletic health. Um, so yeah, let's just dive right in. Um, whenever we're talking about the application, it's really, really easy. You just go through there. I've given you a big explanation and description. Um, if you guys have questions on that, just shoot me a message. I think we have four or five um, applications already turned in, which under 24 hours is pretty awesome. I'll take it. The uh, application, you just go ahead and submit it to me, and then I'll probably reach out within the week, just giving you a call or texting you and see if you could hop on a call so that we could chat about your goals and seeing if this would be a good fit. Um, but I'm really excited because this certification is going to lay the foundation for what we hope to be a future specialty and really a huge emerging setting for athletic trainers. Um, and we'll dive into a wide range of topics. Everything from pregnancy and postpartum is one module um, to menopausal athletes, master's athletes, to the conversation about a female pathologies, post-surgical uh, considerations and red flags that actually will be brought to you by an OBGYN who is coming in here and sh sharing his wisdom with us. Um, we'll also have a whole module over teen health and nutritional considerations for a female athlete. Beth Jones will be giving us a lot of expertise about that. She's an athletic, a retired athletic trainer, but has been doing this for, my goodness, 20 plus years. And so she is a wealth of knowledge. We have Allie bringing in the pregnancy and postpartum. And then we also have Elizabeth. She's going to be talking to us about from a sports psych side of things as an athletic trainer, mental health considerations for a female athlete, as well as trauma-informed care, because that's very important um, in this day and age and just in general for our female athletes. I'm, I'm excited because I'll be bringing to you a lot of information that I've learned over 15 plus years. And a lot of that will have to do even with manual therapy on how you can start integrating certain things for the pelvic floor, for the entire body, um, just discovering diastasis recti, all of the common pelvic health concerns, as well as just general female athlete biomechanics and kinesiology. So Matt will kind of range from a lot of things. We'll dive into, where are my notes? Uh, we'll dive into some other things about um, whenever we're talking about, say, the menstrual cycle, how to come have that conversation with your athletes, whether or not cycle syncing is something that we need to consider. We'll be diving into a lot of research about correlations and causations of different injuries in regards to the pelvic floor and more. So as you can tell, it's going to be a very wide scope, a wide conversation, um, which is the goal, because something that we have noticed, and I think I'm getting a call, um, something that we have noticed as athletic trainers uh, who've gone through these trainings, and by that I mean like an ungodly amount of money spent on continuing educations across the board, we have discovered that there's no certification that really helps us um, dive into our full scope as athletic trainers. So this is the certification for that. We're going to discuss it all. Um, certain things will apply to certain people depending on your state licensure, and we'll have that conversation as well. And then we'll wrap the whole thing up by talking about how we start to apply all of this into our populations. So that one will be more of, we've talked about all the applications, we've talked about all the things that we can start to learn on this foundational level. Now let's start applying it in our own settings if you haven't already and start bringing our collective case studies to each other and really starting to see the change happen and the integration happen. Um, so I'm really excited about it. I think it will be a lot of information um, in regards to the fact, the scope and the broadness of it. But we do that on purpose because we want to give you a taste of everything. That way you know what you might be interested in in the future. And you won't be searching for quite a long time like some of us have. Um, and we can help facilitate that for you as well. Okay. 
So hopefully that's a good cover. Does that answer any questions for you? I think that answered all of them, yeah. <laughs> okay. I know it's a lot and I like spill all that in two seconds and it seems like a lot, so I don't want you to get overwhelmed. Um, but I know that you said that you're in a residency and you do have to a lot of work and load with that. Um, yeah. This isn't going to be one of those things, especially with a beta group where I'm like, oh, you didn't watch it. This <laughs> I know this is more <laughs> of um, we want to expose you to different things. Yes, we're going to need your feedback. Yes, we're going to get, need your commitments, but that happens on your time. And if you can't make a session, we understand, but we want our 10 to really try to make every single one because we are trying to set such a high standard for this certification and what we want to do with it and how we want to continually improve it. Um, this will not be just like a one and done course. This will be always live course. Like every single time that we do this, we will have live meetings as well as the pre-recorded content because it's a really important part of this is the collaboration in the community and the discussion, the dialogue that's gonna have to happen with this. Um, because all of us are gonna come at this from different points of view and different histories and different educations. So that's the beauty of this sort of thing is we get all of that uh, with this sort of setup of continuing education. So I'm really excited, but uh, do you have any questions after that? I don't think so. No, it sounds awesome. I'm excited. Sounds like it'll be a good, yeah, good thing, good group. So, yeah. I'm excited. I'm, I'm a little nerded out and also very like, <laughs> After I after I actually submitted the application to everybody, I you know how you have to kind of come down for a little bit and you're like, okay, I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna freak out. This is gonna be amazing. Give myself yes. a little pep talk just because it's gonna be such a huge, I think, thing for our profession. And Absolutely. Yeah. I'm excited to see how it goes. But yeah, I, I did want to cover a couple of reasons why I think that this is so important for athletic trainers. Um to even, I don't think that, I hate calling it a specialty, to be honest, because it seems like, you know, uh, I'm not sure who all you work with, but as far as for me, I work with jujitsu athletes, I work with football athletes, I've worked with all, um, you know, I've worked with both men and women, boys, girls, you know, it's not right. like I'm only working with female athletes. But I, I think that it's so important that we start to have this knowledge because of how our education, you know, a lot of that research was older research that was mainly done on gentlemen and mainly done on, you know, our male populations. So we almost need that like second coming of knowledge um, just to help us move forward. It It's such an emerging setting because if you've, to me, pelvic floor is kind of a buzzword now. Um, it's definitely, yes, it's important. It's I work with it day in and day out, but it's definitely a buzzword. And I, for a while, I think athletic trainers were a little leery. We were like, well, you know, is that within our scope? Do we have the knowledge? And a lot of what we're going to talk about is, you know, more than you think, you know, <laughs> because this emerging setting, this emerging focus is, it, it could be such a huge game changer for us at the, as athletic trainers especially for our active populations, because that's what we specialize in. And a lot of your um, other orthopedic healthcare providers, they aren't as specialized as we are. And we have such a dialed in um, scope of knowledge that is unparalleled that I think it can really, really enhance, be enhanced with this pelvic health and this women's health knowledge. Um, this is also a potential for collaboration. I never want you to think that um, I am preaching that athletic trainers need to do everything, be everything. It's no, this opens up a conversation and gives us more of an edge to have those collaborations with other orthopedic healthcare providers and with OBs, with your guys, with so many other professionals. This just kind of gets us into the door. And it also expands our current thought process and scope. Because right now, I think athletic trainers, they're like, oh, here's my lane. There's no way that I could do this. No, your lane is like a freaking highway. It's <laughs> There's eight lanes of traffic going on here. We have quite a bit of play with what we're currently doing. 
It gives you more leverage for in-house care, depending on your setting, because I know some people, they're like, well, I need to refer out for this. No, some of it, if you got the time, you have so much that you can do in-house. You do not have to refer out. And that gives you a lot more ownership and um, sets you up with your athletes a little bit better than being like, oh, I got this note from this professional, this note from this professional. I better send them here. Um, no, you got a little bit more wiggle room to play with. And it also gives you the knowledge and tools for better referrals. Because as you guys know, we end up kind of being this middle band for, hey, you need to go see an orthopedic surgeon, right? Well, maybe they don't need to go see an orthopedic surgeon. They need to go see a dietitian. Nope, they need to go see a counselor. Nope, this female athlete actually needs to go see a urogyne or an OB or a psychologist, not, not a psychiatrist. Like there's so many other things where your mind after this knowledge can be like, ooh, I don't have to just be a general blanket of you need to go see your general healthcare doctor. No, I can give this athlete exactly what they're, they potentially will need and maybe help them get there faster versus us just being like, oh, sorry, we got to wait to get you into your general doc instead of getting you into that specialized care. So it definitely gives us a leg up there um, as far as referral knowledge and tools that we can use. And that's just a few. That's just me, you know, throwing out some things. But um, I'll be curious to see, you know, whenever people watch this replay, because I know several of you messaged me that, hey, is this going to be recorded? Whenever you do watch this replay, I'm curious to know your thoughts. Um, if you are currently specializing or trying to focus in on female athletic health, what have you found that it does for you? What have you found that it gives you that leg up on or that extra experience? Because um, all of us are coming at this from different workplaces. I think I was looking at the applications earlier and a couple were industrial, which is going to be pretty awesome for them for their side of things and to get their feedback. Um, some of you, like you're in a residency program right now, which is amazing. Uh, there's a D1 athletic trainer that's going to be joining us. It's, it's going to be a pretty good group just to lay this foundation of knowledge. But, um, anyways, I said a lot. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. Uh -uh. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to wrap up this call just because I know I'm going to record this and Say bye to everyone right now. Um, we'll chat next time. See you next month.